around him. Tierney playing with his marker. And Marcus Rashford might need some hill. He gets it from Fernandes. Who scores it? Hello football fanatics and welcome to the football talk. Yes, that's right, the football talk. For our current subscribers, uh, we have changed the name. Uh, just thought, um, you know, it would be something that's more relevant to what we're talking about rather than the name that sounds like a football team. So, yes, so welcome to the football talk. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is a platform where we talk about all things related to the beautiful game. So if you're new, click on that subscribe button, click on the like button and come join this community. Everyone is welcome to come on and have their opinions and their views on, on this beautiful game. So if you want to get in touch with us, uh, give us a shout. All our information will be in the description. So check out our links. And uh, yeah, as you can see on the screens, we have our socials. So if you want to get in touch with us on Twitter, just give us a shout. And let me introduce my two guests, uh, Triv and Chris. Welcome, gents. Welcome back. How, How are you guys doing? doing? It's good to, good to be back. It's been a while. Um, yeah. Just, just so happens that when my team were top of the league, we never made any videos. Now that they're not top of the league, we make making videos yes. again. I, with an Arsenal host and an Arsenal editor... It's just a little bit fishy. I was busy with work, back, man. Yeah. It was work commitments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Busy, work busy commitments. Work, work, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, we, we wouldn't talk much about that. Yeah. That um, we'll see. We'll, we'll have a video at the end of the season and see how things are standing. But um, today we'd like to talk about um, uh, the competitiveness of the various leagues. Um most people out there, including myself, think the English league is the most competitive league in the world. Um, but is that really true? Or are we always exaggerating or over-exaggerating that assumption because we love the Premier League and we follow it? So let's start with Triv. Triv, this was something that we had a discussion about offline and uh, we were talking about what it means to be competitive. So in your opinion, what, when we are talking about being competitive, what does that mean? Um, I think there's a, the main distinction for me is the difference between entertainment um, in terms of the quality of the football that's played in a league and uh, between competitive where any team can go anywhere across the 19 or 21, I think, in some leagues, are uh, the 21 teams in a league or 19 teams in a league and win or lose a match. Uh, so that's what I define as competitive because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of leagues out there that play very entertaining football, that have some world-class players in their league. But there's one or two teams, three teams maximum, that are realistically going to be challenging to lift that trophy at the end of the season. So for me, that's the main distinction between I'm not... Uh, I don't want to discredit the type and quality of football played in another league, but is it is it competitive in the sense that anyone but those two or three teams can actually lift a league title at the end? Okay. Well, uh, Chris, uh, do you have anything to add to that or oppose to that? Do you agree with what he said? No, 100%. I, I do agree with that. I um, you, you have to make that distinction. So 100% for me, competitiveness is... It has to be a league where everyone on their day can win. Look, if you look at the Premier League, I think you will find that it is, in that sense, it is the most competitive league. Because as you see on a weekly basis, yeah. anyone can beat anyone. The other leagues, funny enough, like uh, Trev speaks about those top three teams. If you take those top three teams away from those other leagues, it then again becomes competitive. Yeah. Say Spain, for instance, if you take away the two Madrid teams and the Barcelona team, you then have competition where everyone can beat everyone, but you don't have that gap at the top from the top couple of teams to the rest. You don't have that distinction as much in the Premier League. Yeah. So now I agree with his distinction. 
Okay, so I'm going to just kick start this conversation so we can have some good debates. To the people that might be arguing against the assumption that the English team, the English league is the best league or the most competitive league in the world, I'm just playing devil's advocate here because I want to see both sides of the argument. Is that if you look um, at the last 10, 20, actually 20 years in the Champions League, you see that the Spanish teams have won it the most times. I think from 2000 to 2010, I think there was only two English teams that won the Champions League, Liverpool and United. And then if you take from 2010 to 2020, again, only two teams, which is Chelsea, uh, not Chelsea, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea and Liverpool. So, yeah. yeah. So if you look at it in that sense, then that, then it means the Spanish teams are better and more competitive if you're looking at it as a, as a whole round comp- in, in all competitions, right? Um, so do you have any arguments about that, that maybe the English team league isn't the most competitive? Yes, Trevor, I can see oh, the smile. To- Go for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, utter, utter bullshit. Um, Why? I don't, I don't believe in that logic at all. Um, if you have a look at the teams that do well in the Champions League, like you said, the Spanish team. Um, I did a little bit of research. I'm not going to sit and go through every single fixture. I'm, I'd go crazy doing that. But... French teams, German teams, Spanish teams, Italian teams. When they play Champions League midweek, they rest players during the week. It might not be an entire squad that they rest, but they do rest key players. And they're able to get away with it and still pick up three points um, over the weekend and then have those key players. Bayern Munich rotate an entire entire 11 sometimes on this Friday because... The FA, the German FA, actually support German teams going into the Champions League and allow them to play the early fixture in the weekend compared to the uh, the, the English FA who are just blithering idiots for various reasons. We'll save that for another video. Uh, for another video. But yeah, um, that is a big reason why the English team struggle because if an English team wants to compete in the league, which should be uh, any team's main focus, you have to play your strong players. And then, come the Tuesday, they travel on the Monday, um, they play a game on the Tuesday, because some of European, uh, some of the best European players around the world. That's not a fair comparison. They don't have the luxury that other teams have. And I think that that's a massive, massive factor. Uh, if you look at when Chelsea won the Champions League, where did Chelsea finish in the league that season? Was it like um, eighth or something? Weren't they like far down? Yeah. yeah, Chelsea only qualified for the Champions League the following year because they won the Champions League. They finished well out of the top four, uh, out of the top four place. The Man United squad that managed to win a Champions League and win that the, and win a league at the same time were arguably some of the best club squads in football history. The '99 squad and the 2007-2008 squad were ridiculous. I mean, the United front three in 2007-2008. Was Ronaldo Tevez and Berbatov? You could, I'm sorry, Ronaldo Tevez and uh, Wayne Rooney. You could have played any one of them by themselves and rested two, and you could have still gotten away with a win. Uh, and that's why I think United were able to challenge on two fronts. The Liverpool team that's doing really well, I hate to say it, but as strong as they are, they weren't able to win both in the same season. They won one and then fell apart and won another one. It's really difficult for English teams to um, to do well on both fronts for for that reason. Uh, yeah. Chris, Chris, uh, you watch the Bundesliga. Is that a true uh, assessment from Trip? Yeah, it is. It what 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 you, what Trip said is one hundred percent true, and the reason for that is because the English Premier League is so competitive. You don't have that luxury of resting players, and it's also again the opposition is. It is different for those top teams. Bayern Munich, the opposition that they play, they, they can rotate and still win. Whereas in the Premier League, whether you're playing Sheffield, whether you're playing Leeds, whether you're playing Arsenal, it's, it's always going to be a fight. You, need, you can't just rotate your whole squad, which makes it competitive, 100%. But then in Europe, as Trip says, it, it then shows. And um, so it has been only the really 
so so my question years. is right right sorry to cut you just before i forget so if you had let's say by munich who are an amazing team right that we can all agree on that if they were yeah. in the premier league you don't think that they would be able to challenge the way they do in the champions league so regularly if they were playing in the premier league look i i i still think they would challenge but it would not be as easy for them no they they would definitely struggle more they they'd have more injuries they would have games where look, they we're are, not where taking we're, this season into account because of the pandemic it's been a weird no no no, no of course yeah, even a normal the season in the normal season yeah even a normal season they will have more injuries their squad is going to run thinner which means there's going to be results where they don't just cruise where they're going to drop points So I'm not saying they won't challenge but it it'll definitely be more difficult for them without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Whereas then I think on the converse if you had to take a, a Man City or a Liverpool and put it in the Bundesliga the European aspect for them would get a bit easier I think. Oh definitely that's a good point. Trev do you want anything to add to that? Yeah on the Bayern Munich uh discussion A time when Bayern were doing really well in in Europe. They had grandfathers on the right wing and left wing. Ribery and Robin were well past their But they were really good quality days. players though. So even But at that age. Because because they were able to play one game a week. They were able to save their legs and have long lasting careers um in order to do that. Let's Okay, I, but I, if, if, if I you, may, if, if you, I may quickly yeah. interrupt, yeah, yeah, please. Do. What what you then see on the other side of of four teams like that for Bayern Munich, and this has happened a couple of times because they've won the season with about six games to spare. They start rotating, which then means come the European games, which are then in the semi-finals, final knockout stages, they don't have that full-on match fitness anymore, and you can see them lacking that match fitness. So. the non competitiveness of that league actually then gets in their way indirectly yeah like the, the same way that that argument is actually stronger when you take psg into account because i think the french league is much weaker than the german league so when you're playing uh, against week in week out against oppositions who are not that good or tough and then all of a sudden the jump when you go to the champions league is so massive that they can't cope and that's the reason I think why PSG haven't been able to win the Champions League even though they reached the final last year or last season um different still, circumstances yeah, there was different circumstances and still they didn't win it anyway so I think that's the best that they can do but yeah moving on from that you know my next question like I've seen this uh, a bit on social media right I don't know if you guys agree with it the now the English fans and rightly so like we've said there's a lot of good points or points that that actually make or we we putting across to put the english teams and the english league as the best league in the world uh or in europe at least a lot of english fans then say that okay it's competitive yes and when we go through like the top all the way to the bottom teams so that means if you take like a mid table team like let's say wolves or aston villa or someone like that or even arsenal because we are mid table at the moment but and if you put them in another league let's say like a spanish league or the bundesliga do you think they'll do a lot better like they'll be maybe not up there challenging but they'll give it a good go and maybe finish in the top 4 or the top 5 it depends which league you're talking about i think that west ham and villa go to the french league and finish second okay um the french league is pathetic like the The only thing that I see in the French league is PSG and cows and horses and sheep and chickens <laughs> and ducks and old McDonald. That league is a joke. It's not it's not a realistic football league in any way shape or form. And um you're 100% right. PSG have suffered because of that. So, my answer to that question is the French league 100%. For all we know, Oli Watkins goes to the French league and wins European Golden Boot. Uh because it's a joke league it's not i don't it's a semi it's a semi professional league as far as i'm concerned and i know that might be harsh and if you disagree with me please let me know yeah yeah I'll please come at me. i'm more than happy to have a discussion about it um the german league um it's more competitive i'm not going to say they'll finish second um top half maybe so it's six, then that that's seven. the same right they're doing like 
I think Wolves finished maybe seventh last season. Was it seventh in the league? I know they were above us. They made you. Uh, they made Europa League, so yeah. Yeah. Seven. So so if they finish seventh and then they're finishing sixth or seventh in the German league or the Spanish league, then there isn't much of a difference, is there? If you look at it from that point of view. So yeah, that that's my uh, point. Like, if they will be in the similar position, then then can you really argue that that league is actually that much easier than the Premier League? If they are finishing in the same region, then I... I, 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 I let Chris, I let Chris answer before I... Uh, uh, Chris, do you want to answer or respond? You can go for it first. Okay, so I... I, I do agree with that. Chris mentioned something earlier, right? About the fact that if you take the top three teams out of La Liga, it then becomes a competitive league. Gents, what is a competition? A competition is something where people compete against each other to win something. If you take the winners out of a competition, it's a it's not a competition. It's a bunch of idiots playing for nothing. Yeah, um, but you, so you can't I just call I them idiots. I mean, teams like RB Leipzig or... Dortmund or well, Schalke back in the day, I don't think they're good anymore. You can't yeah. just disregard no, them. That, yeah, I know they're not good anymore, but they used to be at one point. They were decent. Um, you can't just disregard them that, that if you take the if you take Bayern Munich out of there, those teams, like, I mean, RP Leipzig did, are doing pretty well recently in the Champions League. So you, you can't t- tell me then if you remove the top team, then the, then the league doesn't matter. Because there are other good teams that are going to compete for the league. So that's why. And, and the thing is, there's only one team that can win the Premier League. So there's competition in all places. It's a league. There's a reason. It's not a cup competition, right? Where you keep getting knocked out. These are teams playing week in, week out. So there's competitiveness every single weekend for every single position. Because yes, the top team gets a trophy and the most amount of prize money but every single position so depending on where you finish in the league that's how much money you get and then with that you can build a better squad for next season so it does matter where you finish in the league i understand what you're saying about the competitiveness and and winning but then you can't disregard the whole the whole other 19 or 18 or however many teams there are in the league if you're just looking at the top that's my point I don't consider that competitiveness. So I understand what you're saying, and I get that there's monetary value and um, there's 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 something to be gained, or between finishing third and between finishing fifth and stuff like that. I I I understand that. I'm talking about winning the league, and like I said at the start, my definition of competitiveness is the ability to lift a, a league trophy at the end of the season. And I cannot I cannot take a league seriously where you're telling me. That if you take three teams out the league, then uh, the other teams are just playing for fun, basically, um, because the other three teams in, in in England. How many teams do you need to take out of the league for it to become um, competitive? Uh, like like what we're saying about Spain. If how many league? How many teams currently in this season's Premier League? Two. Do you have? Can you remove Two. Liverpool Two. and Man City? Yeah. Um, At this current well, point in time, I'm me. sorry. I know excuse you. Me. I know United have There's been doing sev- well. Whoa, whoa! But, uh-uh. this is not about. This is not about. But Man at this United current point well. in time, there's, there's eight. There's eight points separating seventeen. That's only this season. Premier how many eight points? points. Yeah, how many points 100%. did Liverpool win the league by last season, compared to the other okay. leagues? Massive gap. How many points did City win the league by last oh. season and the wait, season wait, wait, before? Wait, wait, wait. So I mean the gap Co- is massive. How many points? How many points? How many points to buy in Munich with the league? But uh, less than Liverpool, I can tell you that. It was how, less than okay, Liverpool. I, I, I don't. I don't. That's I my don't point. Many, That's my point. Look, I'm not denying the fact that the English league is the most competitive, but the fact that we think that the rest of the leagues are not they're like not that great. That's I. That's what I'm putting on the argument for, because. Yes, in the last few seasons, in the last three years, only two teams or last four, four or three years, only two teams have won the league and no one's been competitive. The The season before when Man City won it, it was between, I think Man City got 100 points or 98 points and Liverpool were two points off them. The rest of the pack were like 15, 20 points behind. So how is that competitive? There's only two teams. 
In the last, if you look the, look at the last three seasons, there's only two teams. No one else is comp- uh, like yes. This season is weird. Okay, for every league, look at uh, the Italian league. There's like three, four teams competing for the league right now. It's not Juve blowing everyone out of the water. So the same, the same effect has been spread over all leagues. Spanish league, same with La Liga. Who's on top? Not Madrid, not Barcelona, Atletico, and there's Villarreal in there. Uh, there was Sevilla in there. So. Real Sociedad has actually the same points as Real Madrid. So that's that's now competitive. So this season is a bit of an anomaly because of the COVID and everything. But if you take th- this season out of the picture, even if you t- take it into the picture, every league is close. Now, I'm not sure, Chris, how is the German league looking? Because I'm not, not sure. Not all that close. Bayern Munich is nine points ahead. Okay, well, that's that's different. But if you look at the other leagues, I'm sure I'm not sure about the French league. They are, they are quite competitive right now. I can tell you now, PSG must be like 85. Oh points yeah, but that's that that's that's different. Okay, maybe maybe we can take the French league out of the equation. But I'm talking more about like the the Spanish league mostly because I think that that's a really good league. And they did have the two of the world's best players in them for a long, long time. One's left now, but yeah. So that's that's my point. That in the last few seasons, Liverpool and Man City have been so above the rest that the rest of the league hasn't been. They've been competing for top four places and relegation okay, places. Okay, let me let me put let me put a question to the both of you. Um, we're looking at at two years ago. We're talking about Man City and Liverpool in the last ten years. Right? How many times was the Spanish La Liga one, two, and three? Not Atletico, Real Madrid, and Boston no, yeah, in the last yeah. 10 years? No, I know it's not many times. Yeah. How many? How many in the last ten years? How many times was the German league not Bayern Munich and uh, Borussia? Just Dortmund? Bayern Munich. <laughs> well, I, 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 I mean first and second. Even even if Bayern are thirty five points ahead of Dortmund, uh, Dortmund are still second in the league. Uh, okay, let's let's leave PSG out of it, right? Juventus have won that league eight times in a row. Yeah, eight. Seven in a row. times in a row. Eight, I think. Eight, eight times in, a row. in a row. In the you're talking you you're breaking the Premier League down to two years ago. What about the other eight years previous prior to that? No, no, you're right. But I'm saying now so we're looking at it now. City? Yeah. Well, Chelsea Sorry? won it, Leicester won it, so there have been a lot of teams. There was in betweens, but predominantly yeah. Man City. United won it in 2012, so it was still in the decade. So yeah, there's yeah. been many. Teams. In the in the last in the last decade, there have been teams other than Man City and Liverpool that have won uh, that have won this league. Okay, gents, let me let me. But but that's if you don't, if, that's the yeah, that's a financial thing. Because if you have a look in Germany, it's the two rich clubs who are running away with it. In Spain, it's the three rich clubs who are running away with it. It's just in England, there's the more gap money is available. Reduced. The gap okay. is the, reduced. The financial I, gap yeah. is smaller. Because okay. if you take... I, do you, yeah, sorry, what were you saying? I, I just would like to point out that I'm not arguing that. I'm not, I, at no point am I justifying why these leagues aren't competitive. I completely understand. I agree with Chris when he's, when he's talking about why. I'm not talking about the why, I'm talking about the reality of the fact that only three teams in our league have finished in the top three in the last 10 years. So I, I know why, I agree with that, but a fact is a fact. Okay, well, I think we can we can go on till like tomorrow morning. So I, I, I don't I know if you want to add, yeah. Like con- <clears throat> I would like to take this conversation in another direction very quickly to okay, highlight sure. why I think the Premier League is superior to every other league in the world, and not just a little bit, by a lot. I have a question for the both of you. Can you name players, established players that have either, let's say, be, let's say been the best player in the German league or the Spanish league or the French league uh, that have come across to um, to the English Premier League and dominate? Uh, Obama Yang, that's the only one I can I think of. Okay. I hate, I hate to admit, but Michael Ballack. He was, okay, I, he was okay. fairly decent at Chelsea. Uh, okay. Mo Salah was really good at Roma. He came and he's blown away the, the Premier League. There's quite a few examples. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, okay. I know he went to Germany. He was blowing it up there and then he came back to England and he's still doing the same. There's quite a few players. Okay. Um, okay. Now, now, those are only on top of our heads. So they, I'm okay. sure if we dig deeper, we'll find a few more. Sunny left okay. Spain. Now, 
100% Fernando Torres. Okay. Fernando Torres. Now, can you name some of the players that have moved to the Premier League for big money from other leagues and just not perform? Well, yeah, the, I don't know. Um, plenty of them. There's plenty of them, of course. There's but a, there's plenty there's on both sides. Of, there's a lot of players, especially from the German League, that have moved as very highly rated players from the German League that have not been able to cut it in the Premier League. Um, vice versa, how many players have moved from the Premier League and have not succeeded in another league? Um, Sanchez. How, I don't I, think I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, Christian I mean Eriksen. top players. I mean... I mean, I mean, top players, top top players. Not, bro. Not when I'm talking. I'm talking about. Top I'm just thinking of the name. Peak. Yeah, I'm talking about. Top but there's not a lot of players that top leave in the in the but peak. There's not a lot of yeah. top top players who've come from German, or from those leagues either. It's usually youngsters who come. Uh, brother Shinji Kagawa and Henrik Mkhitaryan won German Player of the Year before moving to. They literally left to the Premier League off the back of winning German Player of the Year and both of them sucked. Okay, yeah, that, but, but so the thing not, is that there, there's, both, there, there's, a, there's a pool of players that have come and done well and there's a pool of players that have come and done badly. So there's both sides of the argument. You can't just tell me that all the players or most of the players that have come have, have sucked. Yes, there are some and there are some who have done well. Like I just give you a few examples on top of my head and okay. I, I haven't even dug deeper. So, okay, so then how, then, then, how, then how do you how do you explain a player like Diego Fallen, who I love the lad. He made me very happy when he beat Liverpool at Anfield. But how did he go from scoring twenty one goals in one hundred and twenty six appearances for Man United in his very first season at Villarreal to win European Golden Boot? Some players suit better to different teams, right? Even in the in the Premier it. League, in the in the Premier League, there have been movements where a player will move from one team to the other team within the Premier League, and they'll do better. It's it's it depends on the system, the coach, and the culture. It's a, it's a lot of factors. You can't just say that just because they've moved to another league, they're performing better because of the league. Yes, there is a there is some argument towards that, but it's not solely the reason. Um, Mohamed Salah didn't cut it at Chelsea, neither did Kevin De Bruyne. They went and they came back and both of them are doing well at their respective clubs. They didn't fit into the Chelsea system. But anyways, yeah, I unfortunately, think... I have to cut it, guys, because we are running out of time. But this has been a, a really good debate and we can see both sides of the argument. And of course, um, guys out there, what do you think? Do you think the Premier League, we all agree that it is the most competitive league in Europe or in the world, right? But is it is the gap that far between the Premier League and the rest of the leagues? That's where the argument is. So please let us know in the comments. Again, it would be nice if one or two people can comment. So <laughs> <laughs> it would be great. I know Clyde, who's a, who's also a regular on the show, he always comments. So I appreciate that. But we would like to get a, a different voice or an opinion. Um, so yeah, let us know. And, and gents, thank you so much. This was fun. Um, we will probably continue this later after the, after we've done talking here. But yeah, um, thank you guys for watching and staying tuned. And if you want to come on, like I said at the beginning of the video, just check out our our socials and our the, all the links are in the description. So get in touch with us. And uh, and yeah, please hit that subscribe and like button. And yes, this is the football talk. So we'll see you all very soon. Take care. <laughs>